I know we have seen a lot of stories about pastors who are endorsing Donald Trump from the pulpit, and they're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to endorse anybody from the pulpit or because the law, the IRS rules, rather, they say if you're running a nonprofit organization, the give and take of you not having to pay taxes is you don't get to endorse candidates and churches do it anyway, and the IRS doesn't do anything about it. So that's infuriating. And this is a story about one of those pastors telling his congregation or a congregation how to vote. But in this case, I wanted to talk about something different. The guy I'm about to talk about, his name is Andrew Isker, and this is his ministry's website. And I don't know, whatever. This is the dude. He says, we started this church. He he leads services. And he recently visited, uh, he went from his church in Minnesota. He delivered a guest sermon to a church in Indiana. And he made a really weird case for why the congregation should not support Kamala Harris. And I'm going to play the clip for you. And then we will discuss how insane what he said was. This um, Mrs. Uh, Harris, <laughs> Mrs. Emhoff, uh, who is uh, running for, for president, right? She, neither of her parents are from America, right? She was born in California, but they both were on, on student visas, right? She doesn't have a connection to the history of this people. She's legitimately born. They were married. But, right, if you think about the principle of what this is teaching, right, she is not connected to the past of this country whatsoever. She, this, it's, a, it's a foreign past to her. Right, she doesn't. She doesn't have ancestors that fought in the Civil War or ancestors who fought in the Revolutionary War. Rod, you know, yesterday is talking about. I mean, I, I was envious of him actually uh, about all of his ancestors from Jamestown and things like that. I'm like, man, he's way more American than me. Uh, but right, she, she makes me look like like I was on. You know, like I'm a Mayflower descendant, right? And all of you too, right? Uh, it's it's insane, really, that this person. Who, who is without, right, without a future and without much of a past, at least here, is attaining the highest office in the land, is being installed as the president of the United States. Okay, that's a very long way to say I don't like black women, but that's basically what he was getting at. So his argument for why people should not vote for Kamala Harris boils down to she doesn't have biological children, and also her ancestors haven't lived in this country long enough. That's what it boils down to. Uh, it's apparently irrelevant to him what the Constitution says about any of this, because the Constitution says if you were born in the United States, which Kamala Harris was, then you're that is one check mark on the checklist of what you need to do to be president, what you have to do. He also seems unconcerned by the fact that if we limited the presidency to only people whose ancestors were here hundreds of years ago, uh, then the office would be closed off to pretty much everybody who's not white. Because I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, yeah, there were there were enslaved people here hundreds and hundreds of years ago, but I don't think he considers them Americans either. Right. You know who also didn't have ancestors who fought in the Revolutionary or Civil War? Donald Trump. His grandfather immigrated to the U.S. from Germany or Bavaria in 1885, and it was because his grandfather wanted to avoid military service. So like grandfather, like grandson. So this idea that, oh, man, you're more American if you have ancestors here. Like, what the hell is that about? No, that's not how the country works. Also, then that means Native Americans are way more American than that dude is. None of that makes any sense. He also said, as you heard, like, oh, I'm sorry. He said this elsewhere in the sermon. I don't think it was in that clip that someone without biological children could not be president because you would only be concerned with the present, which like you're you don't have kids. You don't have a stake in the future is what he was getting at, which is a very weird thing to say about someone who does have two stepchildren, like they are her kids. And also this is in front of Christians who have a very strong argument against long-term thinking because all of them believe Jesus is coming back any second now. So who really doesn't have a stake in the future? Is it the person who has stepchildren 
or the people who think Jesus is coming for them any second now. So that was dumb. I. It is funny to me that this guy thinks... Kamala Harris doesn't have a stake in the future. She's not she's not a real mother here because she has two stepkids. But Donald Trump is insinuated. He's insinuating that Donald Trump is the better dad because he has multiple kids with multiple mothers. And that somehow makes him a better father to the kids he totally had no hand in raising. Here's another weird thing about this dude's sermon. If you watch the original on YouTube, look at the title. Guest speaker, Pan- Pastor Andrew Isker, and he's talking about Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 1 and 2. None illegitimate. Deuteronomy 23, 1 and 2 is a very weird couple of verses to base your entire sermon around, and that is what this guy was doing. He said, I'm making this argument based off of what those two verses say. Let me show you what those verses are so you could see this for yourself because I am not making this up. Um, But you need to see how messed up these passages are. Uh, Here, let me. Here we go. Deuteronomy 23. Can you read this? I hope you can read this. No one who has been emasculated by crushing or cutting may enter the assembly of the Lord. No one born of a forbidden marriage, nor any of their descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord, not even in the 10th generation. So uh, to paraphrase, who's not allowed in heaven? Who's not allowed to be near God? Men whose balls have been crushed or, you know, cut off the eunuchs of the world, or people whose parents should not have gotten married because it was a forbidden marriage, I guess, and it doesn't matter. But like, and Kamala Harris's parents were of different races, but is that why he thinks it's a forbidden marriage? I don't know what he's getting at, but again, like I said, these are weird verses to cite. So whatever the hell he's talking about, you know you've screwed up when you are basing your presidential endorsement on a verse that is talking about you can only be friends with God later if your balls are intact. Ah, what the hell? So this is not, here's the thing that's scary. This is not just some fringe figure, okay? This guy is scary. This is according to Right Wing Watch right here. Isker is a far-right Christian nationalist who interned under Douglas Wilson. Doug Wilson is the leader of what amounts to a Christian cult in Moscow, Idaho, and who co-wrote a book called Christian Nationalism, a biblical guide for taking dominion and discipling nations with Andrew Torba, the virulently anti-Semitic founder of the social media platform Gab. So this is not some random dude with four members of his congregation who's just on social media. This is a guy with tentacles into the world of conspiracy-driven conservatism uh, and Christianity. It's a mix of religious extremism and political conservatism. So pastors like this can always find a random chapter verse, whatever, to argue why people who don't look and think like them and live like them should not be allowed to do whatever it is they don't want them to do. I hope next week people reject that point of view. We'll see about it. I just want to show you one last thing here, which is that when Right Wing Watch shared that clip online, one of the responses came from a woman named Kara Isker, who I believe is his wife, who said, I don't know how to use Final Cut Pro, so I'm thankful Right Wing Watch could make this clip for me. So this woman, whose husband probably thinks women should not have the right to vote anyway, is like, I'm glad they shared this with everybody because it makes my husband look great. So that's, if you thought Andrew Isker was like leading some sort of culty sort of group, well, his wife's right there with him. So that's frightening. Okay, I'm just going to stop there with that story for now. What questions we got here? Uh, as if that's at all important. I don't know what you're talking about, but he said a lot of dumb stuff. So like, yeah, 
I don't know why he thinks any of this stuff is important, right? Who knows? I do like the idea of basing any of your thoughts on what Deuteronomy 23.1 says. Like, we need to know how good your balls are before we make your worth. <laughs> what else we got here? <laughs> Trump is only a third generation American. Yeah. I mean, the same people who were saying Barack Obama, who was born in Hawaii, isn't a real citizen. And they know they can't birth her their way out of Kamala Harris. So now they're like, well, her parents had a forbidden marriage. Or in this case, her ancestors haven't been here that long. Well, yeah, dude, she's a person of color. I'm sure they haven't been here that long. It's just wild the way they're trying to discredit her. She's not connected to the past of this country. Yeah, wait till you hear about the Navajo, Cherokee, or Yaqui tribe's take on it. It's going to be wild. I know. It is kind of funny to hear a white dude just talk about how his people have been around here for a while and his pastor friend's ancestors have been here even longer and then just don't even mention the Native Americans who were here. <laughs> 